let's move on. So far, we assume that we know the algorithm. We have an object detector, but uh, even coming up with those object detectors is not trivial. It's not like what we were doing with uh, image classification to have an end-to-end -end algorithm. So our uh, deep convolutional neural networks are going to be a small part of the overall object detection system. And let's just start with RCNN. This is the first paper, uh, one of the first papers, that tried to solve the object detection problem using convolutional neural networks. And it's a multi-stage algorithm. It's not a single stage. It's going to have multiple stages. And let's go through those stages one after the other. First, there is an external algorithm that's going to give you your region proposals. This has nothing to do with deep learning. So you have an algorithm, it's cheap, relatively cheap, and it's going to give you these boxes that you can live with. So given those boxes, it's going to give you, I don't know, millions of boxes per image. You take each one of those boxes, you warp the image inside that box. And why do you warp it? Because at that time, the convolutional neural networks were only able to work with uh, a fixed size, with a rectangular image. If you remember ImageNet, uh, no, sorry, AlexNet, it had, I think it was 224 by 224, the pixel size. So you take your image, you warp it to have that corresponding size. And then here is where the neural network come in, where the convolutional neural network. They're going to use it as a feature extractor. You take that image, you push it through your convolutional neural network, and you're going to end up with a feature. Per each bounding box, you're going to have a feature. So for, for every single image in your training data set, you're going to have thousands or millions of feature vectors. And in the end, you're going to have a classifier, and it's going to be a per class classifier. It says, is there an airplane? Yes or no? Is there a person? Yes or no? So that's the job of the classifier. For instance, for Pascal VLC, you're going to have 21 classifier. And these are trained differently. Okay, let's break down the parts and go into more details. For region proposals, you can use selective search. And uh, if you guys are interested, I highly encourage you to uh, watch a couple of videos about selective search, watch the cor read the corresponding paper, but it has nothing to do with deep learning. And later on, we are actually going to replace that with neural networks. But if you're interested in general machine learning, you can actually go ahead and read, read that paper. That's going to give you these yellow boxes. And this is going to give you the proposals, and it's going to give you 2,000 proposals per image. And the feature extractor is actually an AlexNet. And it's going to, after you push the image, the warp image through AlexNet, you're going to end up with a 4,096 dimensional feature vector. And let's take a look at a couple of examples after warping. So after warping, these are your airplanes. And as you can see, this is just part of your airplane. It's focusing on one part of it because of the bounding boxes, because of the region proposals. These are all of the airplanes. That's a bicycle. It's focusing only on the wheel. And uh, these are the birds. These are the cars. So this is what happens after the warping. This classifier is a support vector machine. And it's going to be, you're going to have 21 classifiers. And the task of these classifiers is saying, is there an airplane? Yes or no. Is there a person? Yes or no. TV monitor? Yes or no, etc. So that's going to be a support vector machine. And let's say you already trained your SVM. You already fine-tuned this feature extractor. Uh, and now you want to run your algorithm. Let's not worry about training. Let's assume they are trained. And let's just try to use it in production. Your feature, your region proposal is going to give you 2,000 regions per image. Now, out of those 2,000, you cannot report all, all of them. You're only allowed to report a few of them. So we have to do, uh, we have to select some of them to report to the user. And the algorithm that you're going to use is going to be greedy, non-maximum separation. This is where those uh, confidences or the scores reported by your SVM are going to become important. You pick a class. Let's say in the previous paper, it was a boat. Let's pick the class boat. And for that, there is going to be 2,000 regions, and you want to select a few of them. What you do is going to take a look at the intersection over union. 
and if the intersection over union of a region is overlapping with another region that has a higher score and if the overlap is bigger than a threshold you're just going to drop that uh, box you're just going to remove it you're going to suppress it and this is where the scores matter that are coming out of your svn so any questions so far am i going too fast no questions so a combination of intersection over union and your scores is going to help you suppress most of these proposals now the question is how are you going to train for sure we are doing transfer learning here so our alexnet is pre-trained on imagenet data but now we have a new data set it's a different it's different from alexnet so we need to do some fine tuning on the feature extractor on these convolutional neural networks and we also need to train 21 support vector machines so how are we going to train them what is the data the data for fine tuning the convolutional neural network are going to come from your boxes from your regions and sometimes your regions are going to include an airplane actually all of these are including an airplane and sometimes it's not going to include an airplane it's going to include the sky or it's going to include the background or it's going to include an, another object the question is how we're going to label these so now to train or fine tune this cnn we need to have data our data are gonna the input data is clear they are in the form of warped images the corresponding label we don't know so we need to find an automatic way of labeling these uh, regions and these are already labeled correctly these are our air, airplanes bicycles birds cars and there are many other regions that are being discarded there being the negative cases these are the positive cases and there are many negative cases that we have to uh, include in our training to fine tune this CNN. And this is domain specific fine tuning. So you trained something on AlexNet. Now you need to fine tune it on your uh, current data. And here is where you're going to have a 21 way classification. We are not going to use that classification, but we are just using it to get better features. So if this one has nothing to do with SVM, this is just for fine tuning this CNN to give us better features for this particular data set for Pascal VOC, for instance. So this is how you're going to train that, fine tune that. You're going to put a 21 way classification layer at the end. You're going to write down your cross entropy loss function. As for the data, any region proposal that has an intersection over union overlap with a ground truth that is bigger than or equal to 0 0.5, that's going to become a positive case. For instance, yes, there is an airplane here. Otherwise, it's negative. It's something else. For instance, it's the background. So that's going to give you a training data. So here is, again, this concept of intersection over union that's helping us to label our region proposals, these warped images. And that's the way that you're going to train this 21 way classifier. Once the training is done, you're going to end up with some features that you can actually fit into your SVM. Okay. What are the data for your SVM then? Anything. Again, we are going to look at intersection over union. Any region that has an intersection over union with the ground truth box corresponding with airplane, for instance, that's going to be a negative example. And as for the positive examples, you can actually look at the original ground truth bounding boxes. Those green bounding boxes from the previous slide those are going to be your positive example and anything in between you just don't include it in your training these are negative examples these are positive examples now you can train your support vector machine and you can train 21 of them okay we broke apart every single part of our cnn let's see how it performs so we went into a lot of trouble defining mean average precision now we have a single number for us to be able to compare all of these algorithms prior to deep learning and the deep learning ones. I'm going to tell you what is DB. DB is for bounding box, and you can actually do a bounding box regression at the end to make your bounding boxes, to adjust them and put them in the correct location. I'm going to go into details later on. And uh, per class, it's actually doing a good job. These are the average precisions per classes. And there is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 classes. 
and uh, there is a background class. So there is in total 21 classes. There is a cool idea in this paper. It has nothing to do with detections, or maybe it has something to do, but uh, it's a nice idea to visualize what the algorithm is thinking, what a convolutional neural network is thinking about. And the idea is very neat. You can actually single out a particular unit. It's a particular number in one of your feature maps. It's just one of your units in the network. And think of it as if it's an object detector. And the score of the objects are going to come from the value uh, that that unit holds at that point in time. So what you can do is call your region proposal. It's going to give you, I don't know, 1 million proposals per image. Now you can look at that the value of that particular unit, and that's going to be able to help you score all of these 1 million boxes that are being proposed. And then you can pick 16 top values for different images and then just report them. And these numbers that you see is the actual activated value of that unit, of that particular unit. This is per unit. What you see here are three selected uh, or three represented feature maps. This is, and I think it's after pool five, it's layer pool five. I think the size of that is going to be six by six by. 256, and we are picking three of those 256 feature maps. And out of those, we are going to pick a single unit and look at the activations of that unit to score these uh, boxes, these proposals. And, we gen and then we are just going to report the top values. So it turns out that this unit is focusing on the faces of people. This unit is focusing on the numbers. And this unit is focusing on the specular reflection. So this is neat. You can actually visualize your features like this. This is an alternative way of visualizing in addition to what we already covered previously for visualizing features of a neural network, of a convolutional neural network to be precise. And I said, I owe you something. I owe you these bounding boxes. Let's try to do a bounding box regression. Let's say this is your ground truth bounding box. This is the proposal. And these values we know. We know G, we know P. These are known. And we want to adjust P a little bit slightly so that it's as close as possible to G. So we want to make some modifications to the current proposal. So we need to par parameterize it appropriately. And our parameterization for the predictions is going to be this dx, dy, and dw, and dh. px we know, pw we know, py we know, ph we know. So we are making our changes relative to the center of the proposal and relative to the width and height of the proposal, because these values have to be normalized. If they cannot take in, they cannot be taking infinite as its range. So we need to uh, limit the amount of changes that we want to make. So we are gonna, our network is gonna output these. And how is it gonna do it? You take a bounding box proposal, let's say this proposal here, you push it through your neural network, it's going to give you a bunch of features. You add some parameters. This part you know, this is fixed. And then you add some parameters that's going to output dx, dy, dw, and dh. For instance, you could go from dimension 4096. It's actually pool 5, so the dimension is much bigger. But then you can do a linear combination and project that huge dimension into four dimensions dx, dy, dw, and dh. And then you do your regression you try to match these modifications, dx, dy, dw, and dh, and the corresponding ground truth that you can compute from this. And this is how you're going to adjust your bounding boxes. And this is an extra step on top of what you do in RCNN to do your bounding box regression. I think you're finishing right on time. For those of you who have questions, you can stay and ask. The ones who want to leave, they're more than welcome to leave.